What's up my friends, welcome back! In this video we will build a power meter. In my past videos we have already built a current meter, but also a capacitance, resistance and inductance meter. You have the links for all those videos below if you want to learn more. But anyway, power is voltage times current. So using the same model as in the current meter, we will build today the power meter. As you can see here on this prototype, I wanted to display current, voltage, power and energy and also the elapsed time. This will be a very useful tool when working on my projects, since I could measure the power that my components will draw. So let's gather all the components and build this project, so let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. So, I bought this power meter from eBay and as you can see, once plugged into an USB and then to a device, it shows the power that goes to that device. But let's build our own homemade power meter. So, for our project, the first thing there is there to do is to measure current. I will use the Arduino Nano for this project. But the Arduino can measure current, only voltage with an ADC. But we know that current is voltage divided by the resistance. So for that, let's imagine this setup. This will be our load on which we want to measure the current. So let's say it is a light bulb. In series with that load, we add a resistance, which value we know. That is a very important step in this tutorial. We really have to know the value of this resistor. If we measure the voltage drop on this resistor, we can easily measure the current. How? Well, we know the resistance value. We divide the measure voltage by that resistance and we get the current. It is basic ohm law. Only one thing, the resistance has to be very very low, otherwise it will create a voltage drop big enough to affect the voltage on the load and we don't want that. For example, if you want to apply 5 volts to the load and there is a voltage drop of 2 volts on the resistor, you will only apply 3 volts to the load. So for that I will use a 0 0.01 ohms resistor like this one. Select one that could withstand over 10 or 15 watts of power, so you could measure up to 1 amp at 12 volts. Now we are facing a different problem. With a resistor this low, the voltage drop on that resistor will be very low as well, and the Arduino couldn't measure it. So for that we amplify the voltage drop with an op amp. We control the gain of the amplifier by knowing the amplifier resistor's values, so later in the code we can easily calculate the exact amount of current. I will use the LM324 op amp. Since it has 4 integrated amplifiers, I will use 2 of them in series, each with a gain of 11. I will use the non-inverted configuration with resistors of 10k and 1k for the gain. Using the output formula for this configuration, that will give me a gain of 11 for each stage, and a total gain of 121. Measure the exact values of the resistors for better precision of the gain later in the code. The output from the op amps will be connected to analog input A0 of the Arduino, and by that we could measure the current. But we also need to measure the voltage, the main voltage input. Since I want this to work up to 15 volts, I will use a voltage divider that could lower that voltage to under 3.7 volts for the Arduino and connect that to analog input A1. If you want a higher voltage range, make sure you change the voltage divider value. Ok, so I will use this I2C OLED display to print the power, current and voltage values. To supply the circuit, I will use a LiPo battery of 3.7 volts and with a USB battery charger connected. We will also need a sliding switch to power on and off the board, some PCB connectors and a drilled PCB. This is the schematic for this project. Download it from a link below and have it in front of you while soldering. I gather all the components for this project and I start mounting the board. I first decide where to place each component. 
Once all the components are soldered, I've used thin wire for the connections. So now the board is done. All we have to do is to program it. Download the code from a link below and open it in your Arduino IDE. First of all, make sure that you have the OLED library for this I2C display. If not, download the zip file below, then go to Sketch, Include Library, Add that zip library and select the downloaded file. Now, read all the comments in the code to understand more. But the general idea goes like this. We measure the voltage drop and divide it by the op-amp gain. Now this is the real voltage drop on the shunt resistor. We divide that by the resistance, in this case 0.01 ohms, and we get the current. At the same time, another analog input is connected to the voltage divider. We measure the main voltage drop and we multiply that by the voltage divider value, in order to obtain the real voltage. We print the current and power value on the display and it is time to test the code. I upload the code to the Arduino. I slide the power switch and power the board. The display starts and prints the current, voltage and power. Now I connect a load of 15 ohms to the board and connect the input to my power supply and apply a 10 volts input. And there you go! Now I've got the current and power values on my power meter and the values are pretty decent. But this is after calibrating the code. You see, all the values that we have used, the resistors, the amplifier gain, the analog inputs are not perfect. Just upload the code to the board and if the values are not the same as on your power supply, go in the code, read these comments and change the values according to your resistors, gain and shunt resistor value. For example, I set my power supply to 5 volts. With a load of around 15 ohms, there is a current passing of 0.31 amps. That will create a voltage drop on the shunt of 0.31 multiplied by 0.01, equal to 3.1 millivolts. I measure that with my multimeter and indeed, there is a 3.1 millivolts drop. With a gain of 121, the amplifier's output should be around 0.37 volts. So let's check that. Well, it is 0.42, because the gain is not perfect. So now, go in the code, follow these steps here and adjust the gain. As a quick recap, this is what we do. We measure the voltage drop on this shunt resistor and on the main input. We amplify the voltage on the shunt resistor with an op-amp two times, and then we read it with the Arduino. We calculate the current by dividing the voltage by 0.01 ohms and multiply the current value by the main input voltage and we get the power. That's it. I print on the screen three values, power, voltage and current, and our project is done. The final code also prints the milliwatts hour and the elapsed time since the board was powered on. If you don't want to use a huge shunt resistor like this one, you could make one yourself, but probably not that accurate. For example, I've used a thick copper wire like this one and made some sort of coil with it. Now I plug it into my power supply and apply 0.5 volts. In my case, with 0.48 volts and 4 amps of current, that gives me a resistance of 0.12 ohms, which will work for low values of current. So basically, you could make your own crude shunt resistor. The resistance that we have measured is not precise. But once again, once the code and the board is done, you could test it using another meter and adjust the code so you get the same values. Below this video, you will also find the schematic and codes for the same project but using this current meter module. This module will sense the current without the huge shunt resistor and the extra op-amp circuit, so that will make the project smaller and probably easier. So check the links below for all the extra schematics and codes. Use any USB charger to charge the battery. And be careful, the board input has polarity. The load in the middle and the positive on one side and ground on the other, otherwise the board won't work. Ok guys, so this is my power meter board. Kind of the same as in the current meter project. I hope that you like it and you learned something new. Check all the links below for my webpage electronoops.com for more details and photos. Also, if you would like to support this kind of projects, check my Patreon page. I would really appreciate that, guys. Now you know how to build a multimeter with the Arduino, because we have already seen the resistance meter, also measured capacitance and finally inductance and current. 
a frequency meter will be very easy, so that means that this will be the last meter of this video series. Well guys, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.